There's three million orphans. There's there's slime in the in the in the streets. People are drinking out of the same water they're peeing in. I mean, sewer infestation, disease everywhere you go. The the the, the graveyard looks like an assembly line. They're putting so many people are dying that they're putting them in there just like you're like you're going to a McDonald's. I mean, people waiting in line to bury their dead. But when you get to the house of God, you can get within a couple hundred feet of it and hear a buzz go on. Sound like bees. <coughs> Suddenly you feel them bees. You get a little closer. You get in there and all of a sudden you enter an atmosphere where people are pouring it out. Before the service ever starts, and the whole time I was preaching, a lot of times they'd have people in them back rooms interceding. I'd get by that door every now and then where they have them back doors and have just a little cloth across the door, and you'd hear people back there just a buzzing out to God, and all of a sudden demons start manifesting the service, and we wouldn't even have to deal with them. They'd just pick them up like boards and throw them back in there, and you'd hear people shouting and carrying on. They'd just take the demon possessed home in that room, and the intercessors are like, Yeah, fresh meat! <laughs> <laughs> Prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Some of the greatest revivals of history have come on the heels of a praying people. I say every one of them, if you really got down to the truth of it. We hear of great men and women of God that, that move nations. Well, I tell you, there was intercessors behind them. They may be unknown to the world, but they're known in heaven. The world may not know who was praying them revival, but God knows, because that's really the warriors that win the battle. How many believe it? Yeah. Prayer. And God may be calling some of us into a ministry of prayer. That's right. To really intercede and to seek God. How do I pray, preacher? Repent first. Let Prayer will deal with you like nothing else. Real long time with God will cause your sins to come up. And they'll deal with you. Amen. And you'll have to really look at them sometimes. Praise the Lord. Because somebody said, well, I repented all that. Then if you repented of it, you shouldn't be worried about it. But if you haven't quit it, then you ain't repented. Things that are grieving the spirit. You're not going to have a spirit of prayer and have the Holy Ghost offended at you. I said, you ain't going to have a spirit of prayer and have the Holy Ghost offended at you. He said, grieve not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. But when you walk in obedience to the Lord and your prayers are there, they don't just run off your lips like water and hit the ground. They come out and they stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said when Samuel, not one of his words fell to the ground. Why? Because what he was is what he preached, and what he preached is what he was. Amen. How many believe we ought to be that? Amen. What we tell others, we ought to be. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what right. we say we are, we ought to be. Amen. 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 Now, when, old, when old, them old timers would pray, when I'd get with them, you'd hear them pray some mighty powerful things. Lord, do whatever you got to do. Yeah. Save them. Pop. Mm -hmm. If you got to kill them. Don't let them die. Just make them think they're dying. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody gets a phone call. Trust or someone so has got this now. Woo! -hoo! What are you doing? She going to quit what she was doing, ain't she? Mm -hmm. It's amazing how when people really have somebody to love them enough to pray what's needed. Oh, <laughs> Why? We've got to be serious about this thing about walking for the Lord. People don't take it serious no more. Amen. And because of the devil's running the church house. That's right. That's right. But when we take it serious with the Lord and we walk with him, praise the Lord, he begins to do what he wants to do. And that's save and help people. Deliver them. Put them in the ministry. <laughs> praise the Lord. Are you here tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Thank you, Jesus. The prayer, for the most part, is a lost art. And I've noticed that in my time. I see people get mad at me when I call a prayer meeting. They'd rather have me preach to them. And that just bothers me to death because I realize they're, they're wanting to let me entertain them. Or Amen. They, they must think more of me than they do Jesus. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's amazing. You know, like at Richwoods, if I, most times, now it ain't that case right now, people have fallen in love with prayer. Woo, buddy, I've been waiting on that a long time. <laughs> Fall in love with prayer. What's that mean? Say, well, we could call a special speaker out. One of them real good, famous ones they all love. But right now, I don't believe they'd get excited about that. They'd rather just say, no, nah, we'd better just keep on praying. Amen. I love it when Jesus gets more popular than anybody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you, you, 
On Sunday morning, they say you can see how popular the church is on Sunday morning. On Wednesday night, they say you can see how popular the preacher is. Call a prayer meeting, you find out how popular Jesus is. Amen. <laughs> Are you here tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer. You know, it has some things have to really be wrestled out. You know, I ain't always just anoint me on the head and send me down the road kind of thing. You know, that, that bop me and bless me ministry that seems to happen on TV. You know, just got to line them up and bop them. Pop, 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 pop. That's everything you need. Hallelujah. I'm not taking away from laying on hands. God does use it to heal people. We've all seen miracles, and God's done that in our midst, even in a tent. We've seen a lot of that. Praise the Lord. But some things personal, they have to be hammered out in prayer and dealt with and wrestled out. Hallelujah. You. you find God yourself for your ministry, for what God's called you to do. It's exciting to be around other people God uses, but if it doesn't inspire you to seek God for something greater in your life, then it didn't do its, do its good. God don't want any of us walking away from any meeting and saying, how wonderful brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so was. No, we're all flesh and blood. If anything good happens, it's God. Amen. Amen. But it should make every one of us realize God's called me to something. <laughs> I'm gonna find out what it is. Amen. The only way you'll find it out is getting alone with it. Amen. It's amazing how much stuff there is in our generation to distract people. You know, when I was getting raised in that little church I was born again in, they didn't play with TV much at all. Maybe a few of them. You know, they didn't. There wasn't no internet at that time. There wasn't no cell phones. There wasn't all this texting. There wasn't all this stuff. You know, and all these distractions that people have. <coughs> just always distracted. People have watched so much TV that got their mind used to just seven minutes of attention. <coughs> what do you mean? Every seven minutes you get a commercial. Come on. And everybody sits there and they're so used to that that they only got an attention pan for seven minutes and then they're back to thinking about Walmart. <laughs> Why? Because we're programmed every seven minutes Walmart. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. But when you pray, you've got to deal with that. Because you get down to pray and you really desire to pray, but then all of a sudden all this stuff starts trying to creep up and pull your mind out. What do I do with that? Do you get up and leave prayer? No. Hold yourself down there and call your mind back on God. Begin to think about the good things he's done for you. Begin to repent of things that's been bothering you and really stay there until something happens. I mean, there's something called entering in. Amen. Because, buddy, I'll tell you, when you start entering in, it's worth all the money in the world. It's worth all the money in the world. And I don't care if it takes you a month to get there. But some of us, man, we we so used to doing what we want, we're uncontrollable. Amen. But prayer will bring us back in control. Be still and know I'm God. You know how hard it is just to be quiet? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we all sit around and we think we're going to tell God everything. Prayer isn't just to tell God everything. It's to get your heart in the right place. Prayer is a place where you get your heart in the right place to commune with Him. To where you know how God feels about you because His Word said He loves you. But then He begins, because He loves you, He begins to dig things up in you that are not quite like Him. Because He loves you. And then you've got it coming up before you. And you repent of it. And you really grieve your heart that you'd even think those things. Because it's amazing. We can sit in church year after year after year and never really deeply be dealt with. But prayer will dig it up. That's right. Oh, I thank God for prayer. That's why the disciples, they believe so much in prayer. They proved it in their preaching. They proved it in their disciplines. Because the scripture said they, they went daily from house to house, breaking bread. Praise the Lord. They first would go to the temple. They go from house to house, breaking bread. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine and breaking bread. It goes over and over talking about it. And in prayer. And in prayer. And they prayed. Paul would be in prayer. And he'd talk about being in prayer with certain people along even like the riverbanks. Even along the riverbanks they praying. Every occasion they took was, I mean, it's great to gather and preach together. It's great to gather and sing together. But has the church of this generation experienced what it's like to come together and pray? Amen. If you ask the disciples what the greatest day of their life was, the Bible said he was seen at 500, Brother Rod. 500 saw Jesus after he resurrected, the scripture says. And he told them, go in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. But by the time you get there, you only got around 120. What's 120 from 500? What's left over? 380, right? 380. So you got 380. 
that should have been there.